All right, well, it's uh, 9 a.m. And so, yeah, let's get started. So I'm very, very excited to introduce to you Jos Yacha. Hopefully I got that uh, <laughs> last name right. It's, it's pretty hard for me. Um, but Jos, you, he is a Lightning Labs. He's from Lightning Labs, and he's going to be talking about WhatsApp. So uh, Jos, why don't you uh, take it away? Yes, thank you, Andrew. Um, so welcome, everyone, to my talk what's next for WhatsApp, plausible futures for chat over lightning. Um, as Andrew already said, uh, my name is Joos Jager. I work as a, 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 infra a protocol engineer at uh, Lightning Labs. And um, my main focus there is improving L&D, Lightning Labs uh, node software implementation. Uh, but today I'm not going to talk only about the infrastructure layer, but also about an application built on top of lightning. And that is what WhatsApp is. All right, what is it? It is instant messaging, comparable to instant messaging applications that we, we all know of, like WhatsApp or Signal. And the way this type of instant messaging works is by attaching the message to send to your chat pair, by uh, attaching this message to a lightning payment. And uh, you could compare this to, in the traditional world, this would be like sending someone, someone money via a bank transfer, and then in the, the tiny description field that you have with such a bank transfer, uh, insert a message there that is unrelated to the payment at all. So instead of describing what the payment is for, you just would put an arbitrary message in there. This, this would be like chatting using the traditional banking system. Of course, nobody's going to do this because I guess the minimum amount is like one euro cent or one dollar cent. So it's not exactly a cheap message to send. And also it can be, it can take a long time to arrive here, over here in the Netherlands, it used to take up to something like 24 hours for a bank transfer to arrive. I think now they made it a lot faster, but still. It's only to give you an idea of how this actually works. So we're sending lightning payments and attached to those lightning payments, there are the chat messages. And this is, um, yeah, it, this is actually a, a weekend project that I started after I met up with an old friend again. And we were discussing, all right, so we are meeting each other again. How shall we communicate digitally? And I proposed, let's do WhatsApp. That's what I usually use. And this person said, I don't really like WhatsApp. I don't really trust it. Uh, I can't use something else. Then we tried IRC, which is also quite interesting, but it has certain issues. And yeah, that was the moment that I started like brainstorming, okay, what else, what else is out there or what can we do? And of course, as I'm working full-time on Lightning during the week, the association with Lightning and can we send chat messages over Lightning was not very far-fetched. So what I did is I created a quick proof of concept to show how this could work. Um, recorded a video of this, sent out a tweet. And when I woke up the next morning, I saw this tweet like it had, had like a lot more, like received a lot more attention than I expected. And also over the, the weeks thereafter, various media got interested uh, in it. So it seems that there is something in the idea of chat over lightning. And this encouraged me to continue development of this. Also look into some details about it, how, how it could actually, how, how it could actually work. And uh, the thing that actually enables this is that since I'm not sure really when it happened, maybe like, four or five months ago, um, we introduced a function that's called TLV payloads. So TLV payloads allows arbitrary data to be, to be attached to a lightning payment. And this is something that was always possible before because you could send an arbitrary data block to your recipient, but it wasn't something that was standardized. And um, since recent, the, uh, the way to embed arbitrary data in TLV in, in the payload is standardized. So this is something that makes it much easier to send something like a chat message over lightning. And in the diagram below, you can see what this looks like. So Alice is sending a message to Dave. Um, I just, I will just go, go through this. So Alice starts with sending out 120 millisets to Bob because the route that she picked to go to Dave is through Bob and Carol. Bob receives instructions with this 120 M set, the instructions what to do with it. And the instruction is send 110 M sets through to Carol, keep 10 M sets for yourself for this routing service that you provide. And there's also a block of encrypted data that Bob cannot look into. Also what Bob doesn't really know 
is it not really know it, Bob doesn't know whether this payment is a chat message. Bob also doesn't know whether Alice is the origin of the message or whether Alice is also just forwarding like Bob does. So knows very little. The only thing he knows is if I forward this payment and it gets settled in the end, I earn 10 M set. So Bob sends it on to Carol and Carol gets a similar instruction. So there's again 10 M set for Carol, uh, the instruction to forward it onto Dave and the data itself is still encrypted. Carol can't see anything there. And Carol is going to forward it to Dave. And also Carol doesn't know, she knows that the message comes from Bob. It goes to Carol, but she doesn't know whether Bob is the origin of the message or someone else. And she also doesn't know whether Dave is the final recipient of the message. So she sends on the 100 M set to Dave and Dave receives this payload. And when Dave unpacks it, he will see that he's actually the intended destination for this package. There's no next there. It doesn't need to go anywhere. And there's also only readable for Dave, the message, the hello world message that's coming from Alice. And what's also included there, at least that's how it's set up in the current WhatsApp uh, protocol, is a, a signature from Alice. So Bob can see that this message comes from Alice and a Alice signed it with her pub key. So he knows that it really, really Alice is really the origin of this, uh, of this message. And last, there's also a pre-image there because this whole payment is locked along the path to a hash. So I, I assume people know how this works in, in Lightning. And there's a pre-image there which Dave can use to pull the money in. So Dave can use this to pull the 100 M set from Carol and thereby Dave reveals the pre-image. Carol can use the pre-image to pull the money from Bob and Bob used the pre-image to pull the money from Alice and that completes the payment cycle. Um, and at that point, Bob and Alice will both have earned 10 M set and Dave has 100, 100 M set. Um, paying Dave is not really what Alice wants to do. Alice only wants to send a message to Dave, but there are currently limitations to the, to the protocol and there can also be limitations to channels, minimum payment amount limitations. So in Lightning, it is currently not possible to send a zero, zero amount payment and channels, they have a minimum uh, payment size that they require. So suppose in this case, the minimum payment size of the channel from Carol to Dave is 100 M set, then Alice has no other option than to craft a route, craft a payment that will pass 100 M set from Carol to Dave. So Alice actually pays Dave for receiving the message, but it is, ideally this is not what you want, but it is also not a great problem because on the reply that Dave sends, he can send back the 100 M set to Alice. So Alice and Dave can keep a balance on how much they owe each other via their chat messages, and they both try to keep it, keep it at zero. So this is a workaround for uh, limitations, on, uh, limitations on the amounts that can flow through channels and also limitations of the Lightning protocol itself. Right, so this is a machine that I set up. I also sent out a tweet about this. This is a mainnet node, uh, which has three channels, for, uh, three channels of the minimum amount and the intention for this is for me to receive questions, if anyone has a question, over WhatsApp. So you can use this to, to communicate with me. But I also realized that like setting this all up, like creating a dedicated note for this, uh, checking out the branch of L&D, et cetera, et cetera, it's not very accessible. So yeah, we'll see what happens if any questions come in. But if not, it might also be interesting to, if you became enthusiastic after this talk, you just use this to test it uh, during the next week. I will just leave it on and you can send me a message also afterwards. Okay, then we'll go to a demo. I will just first show how it works and then go into further details on this uh, system. So this is my setup. I've got five terminal windows and what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a three node network on rack test. So I will start one LND node for Alice. I will start another LND node for Bob. And I will start, start the third LND node for Charlie. And then uh, I want to get channels between those nodes. And for this, I have a small script. It still will test. And what it does, it just opens the channels. It mines the blocks on, on rec tests and everything. And if I look now at the channels that Bob, Bob has, we will see that Bob has one, two channels. Bob has a channel with Alice and a, and a channel with Carol. The intention here of the demo is that I want Alice and Carol to chat with each other through Bob. So what I do here is I 
start for Carol, who's actually called Charlie on my machine. Uh, I start the chat a user interface. It's very um, retro, I would say, but it is UI. And then uh, for Alice, I also am going to start the user interface. And on the command line, I'm going to pass in the destination where the chat messages need to go. So I've got another little script here that shows me the pub keys of the three nodes here on rec test. So I take Carol's uh, childish pub key, and then I'm going to launch LM CLI Alice chat with that pub key. And you see over here, oh, sorry, I'm not able to highlight it, but there's balance zero M set. And this balance is what I was talking about before. So because we cannot send a zero value payment, uh, we are sending money between the chat uh, partners and we try to equalize this all the time. So now I'm going to send a message from Alice to Carol and you see it happening. So here I, the, at the very top, there's the message that I sent, the destination and the blue check mark means that the message has arrived. And how do I know that the message has arrived? This, uh, I know this because Carol pulled uh, the money and across the route, everybody pulled the money and this check mark means that the money left Alice. And between the brackets here is the routing fee paid. So between the brackets, there's not the amount of money that we sent to uh, Charlie because we, um, yeah, we assume that this money will be returned to us in a reply, but this is the money that was paid or lost, if you want to say it like that, to the routing nodes along the route, along the path. So, and you see that Charlie receives the message here. And you also see that those balances changed. So Charlie now has 1000 M set and Alice has minus 1000 M set because she was forced to pay to uh, satisfy the min uh, HLC amount channel constraint. So if I send a second message, you will see that, uh, that the balance goes down a bit further. And if then Charlie replies, you will see that the balances go back to zero again. So Charlie accumulated two sets because of the two messages that Alice sent, sent him. And then in, in his reply, he will send it back to Alice. So that's how it works. So if you send a couple of messages, you will see that the balance adds up. And if Alice replies, then it's equalized again. So it's, yeah, it's pretty straightforward. Um, and in a later sheet, I will talk a little bit more about what the future of this is. Like, do we want to keep this balance thing or not? Hey, Yos. Yeah. So does that mean like, um, does that mean like my balance, my lightning balance will eventually run out because of the routing fees to? Yeah. Pay? Yeah. Yeah, that's a good point. So uh, indeed, you are paying routing fees. How they can be very tiny, but you are paying if you if you don't use like free connections. So there are channels that don't charge a fee or a fee that comes down to zero with very low amounts. But if you are paying for every message, that's right indeed. Okay, so what are the properties of this system? So in Lightning, uh, the payload that I talked about, the TLV payload that contains the, um, the message. Oh, actually I should explain what TLV means. TLV means type length value. And basically this is like a list of key value pairs, arbitrary data that's, uh, that, that is contained in the payload. But yeah, the abbreviation is, is pretty technical. It's also not so relevant. So that arbitrary data, it is encrypted end to end. So the content of the message is private. And this is something that is not very remarkable today because most of the instant messaging apps, they are end-to-end -end encrypted. It's another thing whether you can be sure that it's end-to-end -end encrypted because if you are talking about apps that are closed source, you don't really know whether there's maybe an encryption backdoor built in. But if you use um, a, a chat client, for example, Signal, that is open source, you could audit that code, build it yourself, sideload it on your phone, and then you can be reasonably sure that there's no backdoor and that is really end-to-end -end encrypted. A second property, which is more interesting and more distinguishes uh, WhatsApp from, from the others, is that it's a decentralized. So there is not a single company that is running this system. There's not a single company that can decide, okay, today we're going to shut everything down. Nobody's able to communicate anymore or more, um, uh, like not as dramatic, but still not what you want probably. Uh, they are, nobody is able to prevent 
set of people communicating from each other. If there's a central server on that server, it depends a little bit on the system being used, but they can see who's communicating with whom and they could block certain communication pathways. Another thing is that with uh, WhatsApp, the metadata is reasonably private. So what happens in Lightning is that your uh, messages are onion routed. And as I explained in the, in the first slide with the diagram, is that these routing nodes, they don't know, they only know their predecessor and the next hop, but they don't know the origin of the message and the final destination. So they are not able to collect metadata in a way that a centralized server could. Um, there, are, there is an interesting blog post from, from Signal about this. They also try to improve this by, for, um, by trying to make it possible for them to not figure out who the sender is. So only the recipient knows the sender of the message, but they don't know. But it's, it's not so easy in a centralized system to get those guarantees. Um, in Lightning, it does depend on the route chosen, chosen, what the level of privacy is that you get. So if you only use a, 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 one, a single intermediate node, it might be easier for people to, to know what's going on. Another important thing is that the network is incentivized. So these chat messages that I just showed, they just they drop off tiny bits of money, could be as low as one MSET to routing nodes for their service. So it's not necessary to have a network that relies on donations from people. It's also not necessary to have a network that's being run by volunteers. So the market will decide what the price is of sending a chat message. And I would say that this can be very, very low because the actual cost of relaying this message is very low, but it isn't zero. And I think this is, an important distinction with all our with other protocols that exist. Uh, a fifth item is like scalability. So what's the scalability of this as a instant messaging system? And I would like to connect this to the scalability of Lightning as a payment system. So suppose Lightning is is is, is Lightning works as a payment system for the world. It it can handle all of the world's payments. Suppose that's the case. How many more transactions does it need to handle in order to be an instant messaging system? I think the average number of instant messages that people send on a, on a day is about 50. How many payments would someone send on a day on average? Perhaps maybe five. So there's only one order of magnitude difference. So if we're able to make Lightning into the world's payment system, we only need to go one step further, one zero extra, so 10 times more transactions in order for it to be the world's instant messaging system. So I'm not sure how this is all going to, to work out, but it seems like it's not like a crazy difference. And another feature that you have in uh, WhatsApp is anonymous sending. So as I just showed in the first slide, there is a sender signature for the recipient to validate, uh, to verify the, the origin of the message, but you could also leave this out. So you could also use this for anonymous sending. Um, Sending a reply is currently not possible in Lightning anonymously because you need to know the pub key where your reply should go to. But there are, uh, in, in the original Sphinx paper, there's a description of something called a single use reply block, which makes it possible for the recipient of a message to encrypt the reply and then pass it back along the same path uh, without uh, knowing who the, replies go, the reply goes to. But this is something like for maybe for some time, for some use, but um, I just wanted to mention that the original Sphinx paper and Sphinx is uh, what the Lightning protocol is, is based on, uh, describes. And then another important thing is anti-spam. So because you are paying for messages, it is not as attractive to use the system for spamming. So not even if you're sending anonymously, you still don't want to spam because it's going to cost you money. And the question is always like, does it cost you enough money to prevent spammers from using it? And an interesting thing that you can do here is to make it expensive to send the first message. So in the demo that I just uh, executed, we were paying about one set in routing fees per message, but maybe that's not enough to deter a spammer. What you could also do is to require someone sending you a message who you've never commuted, communicated with before to pay you 10,000 Satoshi for the first message only. And if this is like a like a serious message, it's not a spam message, and you reply to the message, you will just return the 10,000 Satoshi to the, to the sender. So like, a, 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 like a, a non-spamming sender will, will pay nothing, while the spammers, it will cost them 10,000 sets to deliver the spam message. So I think that's, that's a pretty powerful property of this, uh, of this system.
we have a question from the chat. Uh, if you have a channel open with the person you're chatting with directly, uh, does that leak any routing fees over time? No, no, no. If you have a direct channel, it's a similar to uh, um, uh, payments over Lightning, then there, there are no fees. And uh, I guess my, I have another question. Um, so you're saying that there's ways that I can look at the message and like block it, like and not receive it? Uh, well, you are receiving it, but if, uh, if you don't, if you mark it as such, you put it into the spam folder or you just don't even service it to the user, it won't be of any use to spammers. So they could send you this message, but um, if they know, if it's like uh, generally known that those messages will not be surfaced, yeah. It's I mean, if, not worth if, sending them. If there's like anonymous sending though, so like like on Twitter, I can block accounts like because I know that account is a troll or something, right? Um, but if there's anonymous sending, I feel like um, that might not be possible on this platform, right? Well, the anonymous sender still needs to pay. To, it still needs to, ah, okay, yeah, okay, that's right. Yeah, I need to think about it a bit more indeed. If it's anonymous sender, you also don't really know if this is a person where you communicated with before. That's right, yeah, that's but, good the, point. but the benefit is that I get paid. I get paid for them to troll me. So that's not so bad either. <laughs> yeah, 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 that's right. That's, that's also right, yeah. Maybe you don't need to return the money. Yeah. All right. Um, so now that we're talking about this like free chat, so it's not necessary to really settle a payment because you get, you receive the ACLC, you can extract the message from it. So why would you actually use the premium to settle the payment? So below I listed some reasons why you would want to do this. So the first reason is, a willingness to play fair. I'm not sure how many people are on the internet are willing to play fair, but it could be that you think like, I just don't want to use the network in a way that it wasn't designed for and not intended to be used. But I don't expect too much of this on the internet. Another thing is, um, this is more like an engineering question. Can you do reliable message delivery inside an application uh, with the current implementation of lighting that exists? So what typically happens in those lighting applications is if an invoice is settled, if a, a, if a payment is received, um, we put effort into making it safe, that, it, that it's stored safely on disk so that no payments get lost. If the, if the node crashes, for example, that no information gets lost. So for settled payments, we make sure this happens. For failed payments, the path can be much shorter. Like a payment can come in and we can fail it back straight away without writing like the relevant data to disk. So you could make like a failed payment, you could store that in a very safe way. But the question is, how much effort does it take to, to actually implement this in the current Lightning implementations? While for settled, settled payments, it is something that we want anyway. Um, yeah, so this could be a reason to actually um, build a system based on settling payments just so that your messages are reliably stored on, on, on disk and you are not missing any communications. And I, I guess the most important thing is, um, yeah, we need to prepare for future anti-spam measures. So if this gets out of hand, I'm not saying like what's that gets out of hand, but just spam in general, people say sending ACLCs that fail and load the network without any cost to them. It could be that anti-spam measures will be taken in the future. And several things has been, have been discussed on the mailing list already. So one thing is prepayments. So make people pay for any attempt, whether it succeeds or not. And then the question from the WhatsApp perspective is um, maybe we can still pay the prepay and let it fail because it might be like cheaper than, than settling the payment. Uh, another thing is that rate limits could be uh, put in place. So users that generate lots of failed payments, they will be rate limited. And of course, routing nodes don't really know whether the HLC that we receive are uh, directly coming from like the source or are just forwarding, forwarded themselves. But if everybody is employing those rate limits, it could be that like the original sender is isolated and is yeah, limited by a maximum failure rate, which prevents uh, this person from, yeah, from chatting, basically. Maybe it will also be possible, but I'm just speculating here, to pay specific routing nodes to get like higher rate limits on this. Um, yeah, we just have to see how this all works out. And this is also not something specific for, for WhatsApp. Currently, the environment that we are working in is pretty friendly. There are not many adver adversaries. Uh, but if that changes, we will be forced to, to deal with these kind of problems. And it could also be that maybe there will never be any limitations to uh, failed messages. Maybe it, is, it doesn't turn, turn out to be a problem. Maybe the added load on the routing network for chat messages is not significant, and it will just stay free forever. So 
yeah, these are things that could happen. We're not sure what way it's going, but I'm with what's said moving into the direction of the pace messages because of reason one, willingness to play fair, but also because of reason two, because with L&D, it is much easier to get like a reliable message delivery for a settled payment than it is for a failed payment. All right, we have a few more questions in the chat. Uh, yeah. Some says this is very cool. Uh, is it fair to say that while this might first come off as an LN hack, it has unique properties uh, that make it a serious potential chat protocol? And are there any other similar decentralized protocols, uh, Lightning Network or not? Yeah, I think there are other similar uh, decentralized protocols. I think there is a like, chat application that run over Tor. Uh, and Tor resembles Lightning in a way because it's using onion routing as well. But I think the main difference there is that the network is not incentivized. So the question is if like the whole world is going to chat over Tor, what will it do with like these Tor nodes running and uh, facilitating the network? All right, another one is a uh, chat from Prague. <laughs> um, is there a plan to make a WhatsApp mobile app? And if so, uh, would you be able to just use a, a real Lightning wallet or your regular Lightning wallet so you don't need to create a second one just for the chat? Yeah, I, 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 have an, I have a slide on that. I will come back to that later. Okay, cool. Also, shout out to a DC Lightning in the house. Woo! All right, go ahead. <laughs> okay, I would like to talk about like ideal chat channels. So what are, what are ideal channels, ideal Lightning channels for, for chat messages? So as I said before, ideally, we don't really want to pay anything to the recipient. We want to send the recipient a zero value payment. So the payment that you sent out as a sender has value because it needs to drop off part of the, those satoshis at the um, intermediate hops. But the final hop should receive a zero value payment and just reveal the pre-image. And then this pre-image can be used for all the routing nodes to claim their, to claim their fees. Uh, but this is currently not possible. It, it would also require a change in the protocol in order to, to, to allow this. Uh, but that would be ideal channels that support zero value payments. Um, then next best thing is to at least get the minimum HLC, HLC amount as low as possible. So for channels, you can, you can set a, a policy, like a minimum HLC amount policy, and this is also broadcast on the network. And um, you want to be the, have this as low as possible to approach the zero, which is not possible at the moment. And something to take into account there is then you open a channel in Lightning, you set a minimum there, and this minimum can never be changed afterwards. So there is a parameter which is not very clear, but if you open a channel in Lightning, uh, there will be a minimum communicated to your channel partner, to your channel peer, and you can never go below this. Even if you want to change your forwarding policy later on, it's not possible to go below this. So we're looking for channels that were opened with this at the lowest possible value of one millisatoshi. Then there's the fee that you pay for forwarding. So in Lightning, the fee is uh, composed of a base fee, like a fixed amount, and a proportional fee relative to the amount that you're sending. And uh, what we want, we don't really care as much what this does for any amount. We just care about what does this work out to for the minimum amount. So it could even be that this fee has a pretty steep fee rate that makes it, makes it you know, very unattractive for higher amounts. But for chat, we don't need higher amounts. So um, the way we evaluate this fee function is by applying it to the minimum amount that he can send through the channel. And if you have a specialized chat channel, this might be something that you actually want to do, like discourage higher amounts because it will also uh, prevent you from needing to rebalance that channel often. If it's just chat messages or very low amounts, you don't really need to rebalance a lot there. And uh, finally, it could be that uh, those chat channels or the, the graph topology, uh, when it's used for chat, is going to resemble the social network in a way because people are looking to minimize fee, fees. You can connect to any node on the network, but suppose there is a node that all your friends are connecting to as well, you could decide to also make a channel to there. So you're not only dependent on that because, that because there are alternative routes, but in the happy scenario, you will choose your path through that node and pay minimum fees for your chat messages. So what's the state on the network at the moment uh, in terms of how ideal the channels are for chatting? So what I did in the graph on the right is I, I should call it a chart probably. And what I did in the chart there is I uh, looked at the minimum amount that the channel can carry. And then for that minimum amount, I applied the fee formula. So the base fee and the, and the proportional fee and um, calculated what the fee would be to send a minimum amount payment. 
through that through that channel. Um, and then for every node, I looked at that amount, and then I took the what did I do there? I think I took the minimum there for every node. So basically, this is like the if you these are the nodes that how can I explain this in a clear way? Um, what you want is you want this fee to be very low. So there are nodes that charge zero satoshi for a minimum amount payment. There are nodes that charge only one, sato one milli satoshi for a uh, minimum amount payment. I should have said this M set, of course. Uh, but you see that the vast majority of the nodes on the network, they charge one satoshi in fee. So it's not like if you use those channels, it's not super cheap. So if you use a five hop route through like the average routing node, you will pay five sets in, in routing fees. So at the moment, it's not, it's not perfect, although you can find cheap routes. Pathfinding will try to find them, but you may not always succeed in them if you're not connected to the right peers. And this has a lot to do with the defaults, because for example, in LND, the default minimum is one set. So everybody who's not tuning their channels towards supporting these micro micro payments um, will end up with um, yeah, channels that, that charge one Satoshi per, per hop. So this is something to think about. Perhaps this is also going to change in the future. It's interesting to see how this uh, will develop. Maybe there will be also other micropayment use cases uh, besides WhatsApp. Maybe streaming payments is another thing that could require very, very low amount of payments. So this may have an effect on this uh, distribution. Uh, we had another question. Um, what are your thoughts on being able to choose between the two types of channels to open? Example, uh, a payment channel versus a chat channel. Um, well, they are basically the same. Those channels are the same. The only thing is that their properties differ. But you could do this. You could, to the same peer, you could open like a large channel that you use for your payment, for, for, your, for the, like the, the normal value payments and like second parallel channel that you use for chat. You could do that. All right. Um, okay, next topic is how to find your contact. Uh, because in Lightning, if it, whether it's a payment or a message, you need to know the pub key of your contact to send uh, your payment to. And another thing that you know need to know is how to get to your destination, how to what what route to take to get to your destination. So getting the contact pub key, how can you do this? You could do it like out of band. You could call someone, or maybe you meet someone in person. Use a QR code, NFC. Use traditional messaging systems to to exchange that pub key. Um, but people are used at the moment to uh, phone numbers for this. And a pub key is like a 64 character hex number, which is not, um, yeah, which is not, not ideal. Uh, so perhaps directory services emerge that are able to verify phone numbers via SMS and maybe attach a signature uh, to it to make a connection between a pub key and a phone number. But this is something that we need to see how how this can, can be solved, or maybe it is not necessary to solve it. People get used to exchanging their contacts through QR codes. Um, I'm not sure, it's something to, to look into. And the other thing is the route to the destination. So there are two options. Either your destination is a public node. If it's a public node, it advertises itself on the graph, on the Lightning Network graph, and then you can find the path. But this is unlikely, it's also not scalable because we cannot have every inhabitant of the earth become a public node and advertise their connections to the, to the graph. So it's much more likely that the, the, those people will all have private channels to routing nodes that are public. And uh, how this works in Lightning at the moment is that there are route hints that you pass onto the sender and the sender uses those route hints to uh, find the route from the public part of the network through private channels to the final destination. And for chatting, it could possibly work that once you've uh, laid contact with, made contact with someone, um, you, you are going to keep those route ends up to date over Lightning. So when you open a new private channel, you will send automatically a message to all of your contacts, uh, informing them of your new connection to the public part of the, of the network uh, so that they keep able to find you. So what's, what are the requirements um, for Lightning Node software implementations? So the idea of WhatsApp is like, it's an application on top of Lightning. It runs on Node implementation, on a Node implementation, but this Node implementation need to have the right hooks in order to, to work. So there are three 
key things that you need to have. So you need to be able to send custom data. So these TLV payloads, you need to be able to send those. You need to be able to supply arbitrary data together with the request to send the payment. And um, in that arbitrary data, you can pack the message and uh, the signature. The receiving site needs to be able to receive those custom data blocks. And it should also expose that data through an RPC interface, for example. We should be able to read the messages that we receive. And the third requirement is key sent. And key sent is a, a different name for um, something that's called spontaneous payments. So these are payments for which you don't have an invoice. At the moment in Lightning, if you want to pay someone, they need to give you an invoice first. The receiver needs to generate an invoice. It gets an encrypted, uh, an encoded payment request. And this encoded payment request is given to the sender. And the sender uses this to pay, to pay that invoice. For chatting, uh, a chat message is a spontaneous thing. So you want to be able to send a payment spontaneously. And key send is a way to do this. And it's the basic data is very simple. So in the TOV payload, as I also explained on the first slide, you include the pre-image that the HLCs are locked to. So when the receiver gets the payload, it unpacks it, it sees the pre-image and uses it to pull the money. And that's uh, what's called key send. And there are several optional things. I just listed two here, but I'm sure there are many more. Uh, one optional thing is uh, a modified type of pathfinding to go around picking a payment amount. So at the moment, if you're chatting, you need to pick a payment amount. You, you need to say, okay, I'm going to pay one Satoshi to the recipient of this message. And I try to optimize my route for minimum fees for this amount. But this is something you ideally don't want to pick. You just want the pathfinding to find a path that um, lets you pay the minimum in fees, but also the minimum payment amount to send to the other, to the other party, basically to approach that zero value payment as much as you can. And another thing has to do with uh, commitment TX slots. Uh, maybe it's too technical, but uh, in Lightning at the moment, there is a, it, it, there's a commitment transaction. This is the transaction that is uh, not going on chain, but you could take it on chain and it can only contain like a maximum number of HCLCs. At the moment, it's something like, I think 450 or is it 280? Well, something around that. Um, <clears throat> and this also includes HLCs that don't actually materialize on the commitment transaction. So some of these payments, and this is especially true for chat payments, they have a value that's below the dust limit and they on chain, they will not materialize, but they do count towards this maximum. And uh, this is only gets into, the comes into, into the picture when there is like lots of chat happening, but you could consider maybe not counting those um, like the, these like basically dust payments towards the number of commitment TX slots. I can, I can maybe explain you know, something about that later, but it's pretty detailed. Um, then on to the uh, user interfaces. So what, what are the options for user interfaces? So we've got the command line retro chat thing that I've just shown. Um, it might be entertaining, but it's of course totally not suitable for the average user. Um, it could be a dedicated chat app. So on top of a, of a lightning implementation, you could build a, a dedicated app for chatting. But what I think is much more powerful is to integrate this with the existing wallet apps. You don't really want to have two wallets. Maybe if the node is embedded inside the app, so it's running, the node's running on your phone, you don't want to run two nodes, fund two nodes, open channels for two nodes. I think it would be ideal if you could integrate this with LN wallet apps that already exist. And it's not that hard because a lot of the functionality is already there to do payments. So what I envision there is uh, like an extra tab where you can swipe to, and then you have a list of like your, your friends your, with their pub keys, and you can just chat with them as you're used to with, with other messaging apps. Um, yeah, another option is to approach it from the other side. So to look at existing apps that you can use for chatting and not for lightning and extend those with chat over lightning, but it seems like it's a much more difficult route to take because a lot needs to be, uh, needs to be added in order to, to do that. And also many of those chat apps it's at least that's my impression. It's pretty close. They are not that interoperable with other, with other systems. So it's not sure if the incentive is also there to, to make that extension. And another thing that uh, could happen is bridges that emerge between networks. I guess this is only possible for networks that are open enough to allow these bridges, but that would be quite nice to overcome the network effect to somehow have a bridge between Lightning Chat and other chat protocols. 
The difficulty there, however, is that if you send from Lightning to another chat network, that could work because the sender is attaching money for the routing hops towards something that I imagine could be like a gateway to a different chat network. But if you get a reply, that reply will also arrive at a gateway. And in the gateway, it needs to get money from somewhere to forward it onto the recipient that is on Lightning. So I'm not sure where that Lightning, where, where that money is going to come from. So something to think about, like if you're building bridges, who's going to pay for the path back to the Lightning user? And I was also wondering, like, could it also work with email? So up to now we've talking about instant messaging, but maybe it's also possible to do email over Lightning in a way. Email is relatively open. Like it, there's not a central server that does email, although email servers are like, there are a few big ones, but the system itself is still uh, more or less distributed. So I was wondering like, could this, could this also work with, with emails and using email uh, as a case to build a bridge for between the, the usual email infrastructure that exists and email recipients on Lightning. So use cases for this. I think one use case that has been mentioned before is chat between Lightning nodes only about Lightning. So we're not talking about ordinary people like chatting about everything, but just Lightning node operators that want to talk about their issues or successes with, with Lightning. So they already have a node. They already know pub keys of other nodes in the network. Maybe they are the, their channel pairs. And they could use this to chat about, for example, the channel service level uh, that they want to um, adhere to for certain channels. Maybe decide, okay, what are we going to do with the channel? We want to keep it balanced between 30 and 70%. So now it's you, your turn to, to rebalance, for example, or yeah, something like that. Maybe there are problems that need to be investigated. So using this, you could in protocol communicate about this. You don't need to have like the node operator's email address or another way to contact them. Another thing is high availability requirements. And this is a question, something I've been thinking about uh, a bit recently. How important is actually like instant messaging or maybe digital messaging in general for everyday life? So suppose all the centralized services that currently exist for, let's say for email and for, for chat would go down. How, to what extent would this disrupt the life as we are living it today? I'm, I, I'm not sure it's, it hasn't happened to me, but it, I can imagine that going forward, this becomes more and more a concern. Like, that our communication is so dependent on these uh, centralized services. So if you don't want this, you want the high availability of your service, no kill switches that can affect you, then um, yeah, in, in that case, uh, what's that could be a, an option. Another thing is subnetworks that are isolated from certain centralized messaging services. This could be like, there's like a political reason to isolate parts of the network, but it could also be technically, um, I wouldn't really say like an internet on Mars, but um, yeah, maybe there are situations where there is a technically uh, there's a technical uh, boundary which doesn't um, yeah which denies you from reaching those centralized messaging services servers. Another thing that you might want is to escape from metadata collection. We talked about this before. So if you don't want to become part of a social graph that's possibly being built of all of the world's communication. Um, what's that is a, a, a way around that to an extent. And another use case that I think is also really valuable at the moment is just to test the Lightning Network. So if everybody's going to chat over Lightning, um, they will run into the same problems that people run into now with using it for payments. But if there's lots, more, lots of more chat messages and people doing this, uh, there's also a lot more being tested. So you can use it to identify routing issues Maybe scaling issues uh, show up earlier because like there are many more messages than payments. So you hit a scaling limit potentially earlier than with, uh, with, with, with uh, only with payments. There's the issue of latency. So over here in the Netherlands, if I pay with card, it's like a sub-second experience. It's pretty smooth. For Lightning, uh, it's very hard to get sub-second payments. There are uh, delays uh, across those hops. So this is also something that you can see happening in chat. From the demo, you know that I had these uh, blue check marks, and uh, this allows you to get a feel for the latency and lightning at the moment. Possibly also uh, adversarial behavior will be uh, will show up. 
um, we need to deal with that and just bugs in general, more people using the software, more bugs being discovered in the end leading to like a better system. Then there's also missing features. If you just open uh, like any instant messaging app, there are a few features that you see that are not in WhatsApp. So there is a, a, a limit to the size of the payload. It's 1,300 bytes at the moment, and that also needs to include routing information. So it's not possible to send a picture or even a, or a video, even worse. Um, <clears throat> so one sort of way that this could possibly be solved is to um, allow a variable sized payload and maybe also paper bytes. So if you send like huge images, videos, you're going to pay more. Another thing is the offline delivery. This is something that also uh, is important for lightning payments. If you're not online, you cannot receive the payment. A uh, solution that has been proposed uh, for that before is the HLC mailbox, meaning that routing nodes will hold on to your payment or hold on to your chat message in this case until you show up online. Um, it will can only do this for uh, a fixed for a specific amount of time because these HLCs will time out and need to be cancelled back. But at least there is some way to catch messages while you're offline for like a period. And then group chat, something also used um, <clears throat> a lot in uh, normal instant messaging uh, apps. Um, I'm not really sure how to fix this. I couldn't think of like, we just everybody sends all the messages to everyone and there is a coordinator in the group that notifies all the other participants when somebody new is added to the group or somebody leaves the group. I think it could work like that. It doesn't sound very efficient, but maybe it doesn't really matter. It's not very efficient. It also depends on the, the price that you pay for this. But the solution with like a, like a centralized point where everybody sends their messages and from there it's fans out to all the other participants, that sounds not very feasible because of like the privacy guarantees that you won't have in that case anymore. Uh, yeah, so on to the conclusion. I would say it works in a way. Um, you can try it out. You can see to what extent it works. Uh, it is at the moment pretty close to being supported in mainline L&D. So we've been doing a lot of work over the, over, actually over the whole year to uh, bring things into place for the TOV payloads, also for uh, multi-path payments, for example. And many of those things, they, uh, <clears throat> they, they can be seen as building blocks also to support the things uh, that we need for WhatsApp. So the final pull request, two pull requests are up. And if those uh, are get merged, then L&D at least uh, should be ready to support um, <clears throat> WhatsApp, meaning that anyone can build an app or like another UI that uh, allows you to uh, use chat on L&D um, without people uh, needing to use a fork, for example, or like some experimental uh, edition of the software. Uh, we've meant through some of the use cases. Uh, they exist, um, even though the, the, the chat functionality is limited in the form that it currently has. And then the question, is this ever going to be used on a, like on a really large scale? I don't think we can say anything about this. There are properties that are unique to this system. So in my opinion, there's only one way to find out if we just offer the possibility for people to implement this and then we will just see what's going to happen. Yeah, I think it changes the world. So are there any questions? Cool. We have about one minute for questions. So get them in real quick. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, we I, I've actually got to set up for the next session. So, so Yos, thank you so much uh, for your presentation. I thought it was like really cool, um, and it, it's encouraging to hear that like you know you want to keep working on it, and maybe there might be a mobile app uh, soon. So, thank you for your time. Um, someone said that they're convinced that this is super great, so they're excited about it, Yos. And, cool. That's nice uh, to hear. <laughs>